No, I don't think there's going to be much more to the story because that's dominated the headlines for the last three years. Um, I think on the upside, I mean, a plus for Theresa May is that she's impressed a lot of us with resilience, with patience, with bringing a very sort of diplomatic, rather dignified air to proceedings. And um, we may look back in a couple of years' time and say, well, actually, those leadership qualities might have gone AWOL in British politics because we'll be looking at a much more hysterical kind of politics for the next year and a half, two years. So, yeah, posterity is going to be tough on Theresa May. She didn't get Brexit over the line, but I think she's a dignified, very British kind of character. You heard from our reporter, Willem, there saying that essentially there's only going to be eight weeks for Parliament to nut out a deal uh, once they return from their summer vacation, once, of course, the new leader of the Conservative Party has been installed. Do you think that's going to be enough time, or do you see that October 31 deadline for Brexit perhaps now looking a little bit shaky? Well, I think it's going to look shaky because probably what's going to happen is uh, Boris Johnson or one of the hard Brexiteers in the Conservative Party will come along. They'll say, I'm going to take the whole thing back to Brussels. Brussels will say, well, we've got a withdrawal agreement. Try and get it over the line. Um, so we're going to instantly run into a deadlock here. And I think uh, very quickly they'll uh, dissolve Parliament and we'll have a general election, probably November, December, so that the leader of the Conservative Party can come back with a mandate for what you might call a managed no-deal Brexit, something a bit tougher than what's on offer in the withdrawal agreement. OK, so there'll be no Brexit October 31, then. What would the timeline, do you think, look like if we do see a general election November, December? And who's likely to win a general election? Because both of the major parties, if you look at the European elections, are on the nose. Well, I mean, before that, of course, the EU's got to make up its mind about how to address the new Conservative Party leader. Um, if Macron was to get his way, and there really isn't a sign that he will, then the EU might just decide, well, let them go over the edge on October 31st. But I just don't think they're going to do that. I just don't think they've got an incentive to push the Brits too hard. So I do think we'll be in an election scenario. And the problem for any, looking down the road at an election is that British politics is fragmenting. So we've got the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, but the Lib Dems have taken that sort of Remain message on board. And now we've got the Brexit Party, which is bound to take a little bit of the thunder out of the Conservatives as well. So what we might see happening is an even more difficult to control House of Commons uh, with a hung parliament and making it even harder for someone with a clear Brexit plan to get it over the line. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.